Have you ever heard of the Jonas Brothers? Well, if I could go back in time, I would have warned the 2007 Justin that the Joe Bros were kind of a big deal. Back in the summer of 2007, we were pivoting Justin TV from a show about me to a platform for anyone to broadcast their own live video streams. And then, out of the blue, we got an email from the Jonas Brothers. Here's the story of how we helped them do their first ever live broadcast through the internet, had the world completely in our hands, and then fumbled the ball. In March of 2007, we launched my live streaming show where I broadcast my life to the internet 24 seven. That's right, I was the OG live streamer, but there was only one problem. My life was incredibly boring. Most of the show consisted of me eating, sleeping, or working on my computer. And consequently, the people who came to watch me would say, hey, get off your ass and go entertain us. So by the summer, my co-founders and I decided that we needed to open up Justin TV as a platform to let anyone broadcast live video. Kinda like YouTube, but live. And yes, YouTube didn't have live back then. That's right, we beat them to it and they straight up copied us. But before we launched, we needed some beta testers, streamers who would try out the early version of the site and work with us on improving it. Most of these streamers we recruited from the audience that showed up to watch the Justin TV show, my show. These were people who were filmmakers, podcasters, comedians, and just random people who wanted to try showing off their lives online on the internet. Now during that first summer, my younger brother Dan happened to be our intern. Dan later went on to become the co-founder of Cruise, the self-driving car company that recently raised money from Microsoft at a $30 billion valuation. But back then he was just a college student working at a fairly shitty summer job. And one of those shitty jobs was checking the info at justin.tv email address, which was routinely filled with spam, user complaints, crazy people, and occasionally, very, very rarely, someone wanting to send us some free shit. But then, bing, Dan got an email from Hollywood Records. Apparently, they had seen my stream during a recent trip I'd done to New York City and were impressed that it had kept working no matter where I seemed to go. Times Square, inside elevators, walking down the street. Now they wanted to do a live stream of one of their new acts, the Jonas Brothers, and thought that maybe they could do it with us on our site as a way to promote the band. At the time, millions of teenage girls probably would have loved to be in our shoes, but we had never heard of them. So we said, hey Dan, go run with it. And he went on to help them schedule a series of live broadcasts for fans on Justin TV. Time to coincide with their upcoming album release. Uh, I think these guys might be kind of big. That's what Dan tried to warn us before the broadcast. But we figured it was probably pretty safe to ignore them and just go back to whatever we were doing. At this time, the streams on our site were not very big and our servers were set up to handle a minimum amount of load. Little did we know how totally unprepared we were for the traffic apocalypse that is teenage girls trying to get in touch with a boy band. The first broadcast we did with them suffered from some downtime and latency problems, but overall the experience was okay and the fans seemed receptive and the band agreed to continue broadcasting. Now the second broadcast was set to be much, much bigger. The Jonas Brothers team promoted for longer and it was closer to the album dropping. We made an effort to take what we learned from the first broadcast and harden our tech, and we thought we were prepared. Now there's a concept in computing called the thundering herd problem, where many processes wait for the same event. And when that event occurs, the processes are all woken up, but only one can be served and the rest go back to sleep, only to wake up again and request access to the same resource. This drains system resources, eventually grinding everything to a halt. Jonas Brothers fans were the ultimate thundering herd. 30 minutes before the broadcast was set to start, the site crashed. Thousands of fans were browsing the page in advance, signing up, logging in, and favoring the Jonas Brothers channel. All these activities, plus the constant background of refreshing on the page to check whether the stream was up created this massive strain on our servers and the site proceeded to, what's the technical term? Fall over. Now my technical co-founders, Emmett and Kyle, who I feel tremendously bad for in this story, were literally coding up features, well, shutting down features and live pushing fixes to the site. They were doing things like statically caching all the pages, shutting down all our dynamic features, and changing the video player code to send fewer requests to the video system. Michael and I had the unenviable job of taking turns on the phone with Jonas Brothers management and trying to explain what the hell was going on. Now, when the site first went down ahead of their scheduled broadcast, we told them, don't worry, we took everything down for maintenance to make sure that everything worked. That's right, I lied and I'm not proud of it. Now, although they were surprised and a little confused that we had just taken down our entire site just for them, they seemed grateful. As time ticked by and the broadcast start time came and went, we ran out of excuses. Various Jonas Brothers team members started calling us angrily every few minutes, both from on site with the Jonas Brothers and then back at Hollywood Records HQ, demanding to know when things would be fixed and telling us how disappointed the boys were. 
without a better idea, Michael and I resorted to telling whoever we spoke to that they should call whichever one of us wasn't on the phone at that precise moment for the most cutting edge update. In reality, Michael and I were standing in the same room, sweating profusely and staring at each other with haunted, bewildered looks. Just as Michael and I hit peak freak out, our office manager, Aram, walked by and casually uttered something that I'm gonna remember to the end of my days. He said, officers don't have morale problems. Now there's a very good lesson in there somewhere, and I wish that I could say I realized the profound truth in Aram's words and immediately pulled myself together, providing a stunning example of grace under fire to our frantic team and rallying them to get everything working. Instead, I think I screamed something along the lines of, what the f are you talking about? And continued bemoaning whatever I'd done in a previous life to deserve being so close to success only to see Justin TV's prospects swirling down the drain. After what felt like decades, but was probably only 25 minutes, Kyle and Emmett jerry-rigged the site into a functional state and the broadcast proceeded. In retrospect, not the end of the world. But Hollywood Records lost all faith in us and moved all of their promotional broadcasts to our competitor. Ustream. Eventually, we got better at scaling, but not before the rest of Hollywood got on board Ustream instead of Justin TV. We were stuck with the random podcasters, people chatting at their webcams, and the gamers. Which, it turns out, may have been a blessing in disguise as we eventually pivoted to serve those gamers and became Twitch. Now, before we get into the key lessons, make sure to smash subscribe and turn on post notifications, and I will love you forever. I'm giving brownie points to everybody who helps me get to my goal of 250K. That sounds like a little bit of a weak goal, to be honest. We're gonna have to reassess. That. All right, fam, here are the key lessons. Number one, always load test your product. We really had no excuse, except for the fact that none of us had ever scaled anything before, but you've got to test your shit. Two, to this day, I remember that officers don't have morale problems. Calm and composure are a gift to your team. Do the self work so that you can maintain them. Number three, celebrity broadcasts are sexy, but they don't make any money. We were enamored by the cool factor, but our real market turned out to be eight hour long gaming streams. Don't just get caught up in the shiniest thing. Boom, that's the story. You know what to do. Smash subscribe and I will see you guys next week.